The sixth indexing myth is that a GUID is a good choice for a cluster key value. Not true, because GUIDs are usually random, and that means that they're going to cause index fragmentation. And index fragmentation in your clustered index is going to be the most expensive kind of fragmentation to get rid of, because the clustered index is bigger than all your other indexes. Why does this happen, though? Because the GUID is a random value, and you're using it as the index key, that means the index key is essentially random. So when you go to insert a new record into the index, you're doing a random insertion. Basically, the insertion point in the index is completely random. This means you've got no real control over where the index records go, and so the index pages at the leaf level of the index are going to fill up, and you're going to have page splits, which cause fragmentation, as we talked about earlier in this module. The other thing to consider is that GUIDs are very large. They're 16 bytes. That means that because a cluster key is included in all the non-clustered index records, all this extra space is required in your non-clustered indexes as well. You could kind of work around the random issue by using new sequential ID to create the GUID rather than new ID. However, that means that you've got to call down into SQL Server to get the GUID, and they're still 16 bytes long. There are a lot less random than random GUIDs because what new sequential ID does is it picks a GUID and gives you a, a roughly a thousand GUIDs in order and then jumps to a different place in the 16-byte the, the space of, of GUIDs and gives you another thousand and so on and so on. So it doesn't cause anywhere near as much fragmentation, but it does mean you've got to call down into SQL Server to get your GUID value rather than generating it in, in the mid-tier or in .NET or something like that. A better choice in many cases for a cluster key would be something that was ever increasing, like an int identity column or a big int identity column. These are a lot smaller than GUIDs as well, because they're four or eight bytes wide, respectively. And as I said earlier, that gives you your nice append-only insert pattern. You really want to choose a cluster key that's going to reduce or remove fragmentation completely. So a GUID is usually not a good choice for a cluster key. In this demo, I want to show you how GUIDs as a cluster key or an index key can contribute to index fragmentation. I'm going to create a database to play with. And I don't need the full recovery model here, so I'm just going to use the simple recovery model. And then I'm going to create two tables. One table is called bad key table, and it has a clustered index on column C1. And C1 here is a GUID that's being created using the new ID function. There's also a non-clustered index on column C2, which is a date time. Then I have another table called bad key table two, and you can see that the structure of bad key table two is exactly the same as that for bad key table. The only difference is that the column C1 that I'm gonna use for the clustered index on bad key table two is populated using the new sequential ID function. The new ID function generates random GUIDs. The new sequential ID function generates a random GUID, and then the next times you call it, it gives you back a thousand GUIDs in sequence before the thousand and month call, roughly, will jump to another GUID and then give you another thousand in sequence. So let's go ahead and create those two tables. And then I'm going to insert 250,000 records into each of these. And this is going to take a few minutes to run, so I'm going to pause the recording and then unpause the recording when it's finished running. And there you can see that it finished. So I paused there for about three and a half minutes. Now let's have a look at the fragmentation level of all those four indexes. And I'm using the index physical stats DMV, and I'm doing a little bit of processing on the, the output to make it print out nicely. I'm also cross-applying with the sysindexes catalog view so that I can get names out of the physical stats DMV rather than just IDs. So if I go ahead and run that, we see that the bad key table, the clustered index for it, is 99.1% fragmented, almost perfectly fragmented, compared to the clustered index for bad key table 2, which is less than 1% fragmented. That's because the cluster key for bad key table is a random GUID. So the insert position of the new clustered index records is essentially random in the index. So the index leaf level pages are filling up, and the next random insert that comes into that page is causing a page split operation. And page splits cause fragmentation, and they also cause low page density. And you can see the 
page density there, the amount of used space on the page, is only 66.8% on average for the cluster key that's a random GUID. But it's almost 98% for the cluster key that's a non-random GUID. Now look at this. The fragmentation of the non-clustered index on the date time for the table with the non-random GUID is only 1%. But for the table that has the random GUID, it's 45%. What's happening here is that the date time key value for this non-clustered index, the minimum time period that a date time value can resolve, is 3.3 milliseconds. So if I can insert a few hundred values into this non-clustered index every 3.3 milliseconds, they're all going to have the same non-clustered index key. However, that means that the insertion point within that range of values is going to be bounded by the cluster key. And the cluster key, because it's included in the non-clustered index key as well, because I created a non-unique non-clustered index, actually makes the insertion point within that range of all the same date time random. And so I start to see fragmentation in the non-clustered index as well. So not only can cluster keys using GUIDs, random GUIDs, cause a lot of fragmentation at the clustered index, they can actually also affect non-clustered indexes. One more reason to try and avoid using random goods as cluster keys.